Hello everyone. I'm Dr. Priya Sipaha. My topic for today is Law of Torts and Introduction. What is tort? Tort is derived from the Latin word totum, which means twisted or wrong. Here wrong means injury, that means legal injury. Legal injury I will explain later. So the tort is a conduct that harms other people or, or their property. The law of tort is originated by the common law of England, which is generally civil in nature. The difference between the common law and legislative law I have explained in my previous video. It is well developed in UK, USA and other advanced countries. In India, law of tort is not codified like other branches of law like Indian Contract Act or IPC, etc. It is still in the process of development. So in common law, a tort is a civil wrong that unfairly causes someone else to suffer loss or harm, resulting in legal liability for the person who commits the tortious act. So the legal injuries are not limited to physical injuries and may include emotional, economic or reputational injuries as well as violation of privacy, property or constitutional rights. Tort includes such varied topics as auto accident, false imprisonment, defamation, product liability, copyright, infringement and environmental pollution. So let's understand the meaning of torts. Tort is a civil wrong. Now what is wrong and how many types of wrong are there? There are two types of wrong. The first one is public or a criminal wrong and second is private or a civil wrong. And as I said, the tort is a civil wrong. To understand tort as a civil law, it is necessary to understand the difference between civil and criminal law. Civil law implies to a general law which is concerned with disputes between individuals, organization or both wherein the wrongdoer compensates the affected one. Whereas criminal law denotes the law related to the offenses or crimes committed against the society as a whole. Secondly, in civil law, the party who files the suit is called plaintiff, while the party who responds to the suit is known as defendant, and the entire process is termed as litigation. Whereas in criminal law, what happens? First, the complaint is registered with the police regarding the crime, after which the police investigates the crime and files criminal charges. The aggrieved party can only report a crime, but the charges can only be filed by the government, who is represented by the prosecutor in the court of law against the defendant. That means the party is government. Thirdly, the purpose of civil law is to sustain the rights of a person and to compensate him. But in criminal law, the purpose is to maintain law and order and to protect society and to give punishment to the wrongdoers. Civil law deals with any harm or violation to individual rights and criminal law deals with the acts which law defines as offenses. In civil law, the agreed party or complainant sue the other party, whereas in criminal law, an individual is prosecuted for committing a crime in the court of law. In civil law, the remedy is sought to settle the dispute between the parties concerned, wherein compensation may be provided to the aggrieved party. On the contrary, in criminal law, punishment is given to the wrongdoers or fine may be imposed or both. In civil law, the court has the power to award for damages and injunction. Although in criminal law, the court has the power to give imprisonment charge fine or discharge the defendant. In a civil case, the defendant is liable or not liable. However, in a criminal case, the defendant is either guilty or not guilty. 
types of dots broadly there are three types of dots intentional dots negligence and strict liability under intentional dots there are two types first is against the person which mean assault battery infliction of mental distress false imprisonment etc and second is against the property the second one is negligence negligence is whenever someone is expected to fulfill the legal duty towards another and he is doing a violation of that legal duty then it comes under torts third is strict liability strict liability is when the person is liable without any proof and he is strictly liable towards a tort strict liability i will explain in a next video so the torts can be characterized as it is a private wrong which infringes the legal right of an individual or specific group of individuals the person who commits tort is called tort feeser or wrongdoer the place of trial is civil court in tort tort litigation is compoundable that is the plaintiff can withdraw the suit filed by him tort is a species of civil wrong it is other than the breach of contract the remedy in tort is unliquidated damages or other equitable relief to the injured unliquidated damages means it is not specified although tort is a civil wrong but still there is a difference between tort and crime and tort and contract let's discuss the difference between the tort and crime tort is less serious wrong and are considered as private wrongs and have been labeled as civil wrong whereas crime is more serious wrong and have been considered to be public wrong and are known as crimes the suit is filed by the injured person himself in torts whereas in the case of crime it is brought by the state compromise is always possible in torts but compromise it not possible in crime except in certain cases a person who commits tort is tort feeser a person who commits crime is a criminal or offender the wrongdoer pays compensation to the injured party in torts whereas in crime the criminal is punished the remedy of tort is unliquidated damages or other equitable relief to the injured whereas the remedy under crime is only punishment tort litigation is compoundable and in criminal cases it is not compoundable although some exceptions are stated in section 320 of crpc distinction between torts and breach of contract breach of contract results from breach of a duty undertaken by the parties themselves whereas tort occurs from the breach of such duties which are not undertaken by the parties but which are imposed by law in contract each party owes duty to the other but duties imposed by law of torts are not towards any specific individual but towards the world at large in breach of contract damages of contract is liquidated and in torts damages of torts is unliquidated that means in contract the damages are predefined whereas in torts damages are not defined but it is as per law in breach of contract it provides limited remedy and in torts it provides unlimited remedy distinction between tort and breach of trust damage of tort is unliquidated and damage of breach of trust is liquidated law of tort was part of common law whereas law of trust was part of court of chancery tort is partially related to the law of property 
and trust is a branch of law of property. This is all about the basics of dots. I hope you like the video. For detailed notes, you may visit to my website that is www.priyasapaha.com. Till then, goodbye. Take care.